Everybody tells you that in order to be a really out there and accepted and perfect and with it cruiser, you've got to be a DIYer. But how in the world do you start to gain any of those do-it-yourself skills? Hi, I'm Nika Waters and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast, your podcast source for answers to all your cruising questions, even the ones you're not altogether sure you have yet. Today's episode of the Boat Galley podcast is sponsored by SeaTech Systems. SeaTech offers cruiser tested solutions for weather, navigation, and communications. These solutions include satellite internet, Wi Fi, cellular, and single sideband. What's more, SeaTech offers DIY electronics consulting with custom wiring diagrams and professional advice for your own installation and integration projects. Visit c-tech.com, that's S-E-A-T-E-C-H.com for more information. As a bonus, Boat Galley podcast listeners get free shipping from SeaTech with the code GALLEY2019 at checkout. I've got a confession to make. I am not the world's best do-it-yourselfer. I'm great in the galley. Let me tackle anything provisioning and food related. But when it comes to work on the boat, I'm pretty good at holding a flashlight. I'm pretty good at measuring things. And I'm pretty good as the assistant to hand my other half the tools that he needs. Lately, though, I've been figuring that it's time for me to gain some competence in those things all on my very own. After all, it's my boat, too. So how in the world do you start getting those skills? I've got four tips for you, and I think you'll like them. We're spending a lot of time getting our house ready to put on the market as we get ready to go cruising. If you've been listening to the podcast or following along on my blog, you've probably noticed that, that that's what's going on. And I will say one of the things that's helpful as I learn to work on power tools in the house is that there's a little bit more space if I need it. I was texting my friends, Carolyn Sherlock of the Boat Galley podcast and Bean Gifford on Totem, and I said to them, oh, victory, I used the jigsaw successfully for the first time. And Carolyn wrote back and said, oh, I have, that's great. I just have the hardest time cutting straight with a jigsaw. And I laughed. I said, I didn't say straight. No, my version of successful was that I managed to cut the word to approximately the right size with the power tool. I was cutting up some pieces of flooring that we're doing. We finished installing hardwood floors upstairs in our house. I'm going to back this up a little bit and say that I'm actually a little bit frightened of power tools. Give me a grill, give me a stove, give me an oven, no problem. But power tools, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with those, at least with drills and power screwdrivers, to the point that actually when I was trying to screw some things on on the boat when we were putting our, um, our ceiling strips up, I actually chose to use the power screwdriver when I was doing that. Whereas a year ago, I would have just said, no, you know what, I'm totally fine. I'm going to grab the hand screwdriver and do it. When it comes to a saw, I'm still pretty happy just using a hand saw. And even then, sometimes I like to just say, you know what, Jeremy, I think you can do this. But here's the thing. I know that power tools save time and frustration. They also can turn a small project into something really, really big when you screw up. Power tools are saving time and frustration, and also power tools has the, have the possibility to completely screw it up. It's sort of like coming in too fast to a dock. If you are planning on your reverse working super well and you don't see anything wrong with coming into a dock going 50 miles an hour, you might be in trouble if that engine doesn't if that engine doesn't actually go into reverse. So go slowly. My version of going slowly with DIY is not to use power tools. As we were working on this flooring project in the house, we have a system down and our system for the bulk of it was pretty much an operation of teamwork. Jeremy would lay down the plank, tap it into place, nail it, and then move on to the next one. We were, where we were put, how we were putting our floors down required drilling pilot holes and screwing in the screws. And so I followed along doing that in the plank after he had tapped it. And we basically kept pace with each other. By the time he'd gotten the next ones laid, I was finished with the drilling and screwing and it was all good. 
And it did take a few lines of these planks for me to get comfortable using the tools. I sometimes would still revert to using a hand screwdriver to get the final tiny little bit of it right. Um, and then as I got more used to it, I was able to fine tune it by using the power tool the whole time. And I wonder, I learned a little bit, maybe the confidence that I felt in using that drill, that electric screwdriver, might that have something to do with the fact that I probably drilled and screwed in over 1500 holes and screws? Hmm. I wonder. <laughs> when you're putting in the floor, the last couple of lines of flooring, you can't do it the same way as you can the rest of them, at least the one, the last lines of flooring that go right against the wall, because you just don't have the space to either fit the tool in there or swing the mallet to actually bang the tool. So the last couple of lines, they have to be done with nails and an old fashioned hammer and then a punch to sink the head of the nail under the surface of the plank. And Jeremy was really doing most of those. He's got that very precision work down. And I sat in the closet and I looked at the fact that there were three planks missing in the closet that needed to be done the way he was doing the lines on the rest of the floor. And I watched him. I had watched him do this a few times. I watched him measure and mark those pieces. I watched how he placed the drills and how he went with the rest of it. I knew that I needed to leave a little space for the expansion of the flooring as the humidity grows during the year. And then I started to think, it's the closet. If it's really bad, who's going to see it? These planks, and we were using bamboo flooring, they needed to be cut to size and tapped into place and then drilled and screwed. Huh. I'm debating cutting the closet pieces. Really? I said that out loud? Go for it. He smiled at me and went back to measuring the planks that needed to be ripped on the table saw because actually the pieces that go right up against the wall, they needed to be cut in half, so ripped there. So I gathered up all my tools. I got the planks that I needed. I checked the orientation of the tongue and groove, making sure I wasn't screwing that up. I measured, marked it with a pencil, slid the line on it. And I took a deep breath when I went downstairs because that's where we had set up kind of our makeshift um, makeshift workshop inside. Too cold to be outside when I was doing this. And I looked at the jigsaw and I took a great big breath and I picked it up, lined it up. And I think I probably held my breath through that whole three seconds of cutting that plank. And I did it. I cut the plank. I installed it, I drilled it, and I screwed it, and I measured the next one, and I learned enough from the next, from the first one, that I needed to use a vise instead of using my hand to hold the second plank on the makeshift table before I pressed the trigger for the saw. And then I installed that one, and I measured the third one, and I did a better job with the measurement and the sawing the whole time. And I have to tell you, I really love looking in that closet because I know that I did those last three planks. And now I've got goals right? I was laughing saying that I had contacted Carolyn and she was saying, oh, great, you cut it straight. And I was like, no, 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 that's the next goal. And so how do you gain do-it-yourself skills? What was all this story about? What does it have to do with boat skills? I think that probably we can learn about boat skills even if we're not on a boat. But how do you gain those skills? First of all, you observe and you ask questions. That old idea of being an apprentice somewhere and watching somebody and asking them, that's a great way to get the first step. If I watch Jeremy do it 15 times, I'm going to have an idea as to what's supposed to be done. The second way to, go, to gain do-it-yourself skills, having somebody tell you that you can do it, that's really a big thing. When I said, hey, I'm thinking about cutting the planks and having Jeremy say, yeah, go for it. It's like, oh, okay. He doesn't think I'm going to screw anything up too terribly. I know I can do it too. The third way that you gain these skills is you take a breath and you actually start doing it. It helps me if it's not a place that matters that much. So if I were going to work on cushions, I might want to, to uh, try and work on sewing the seam that was going to be tucked at the far end of the quarter berth rather than something that was going to be in the main salon. I like to have something and work on something that's in a place that doesn't matter that much. So in this instance, it was cutting the closet planks from leftover pieces that we couldn't use anywhere else. 
as opposed to grabbing a fresh plank of bamboo that needed to go into a place that we were going to see all the time. And then the fourth thing, and I did this each time I cut a plank, I'm going to review, reflect, and set goals for the next time. So yeah, you may not think that laying flooring in a closet on a house will help me have any skills for being on the boat, but here's the thing. I know that I can use a jigsaw. I know that I can use a drill and a screw gun and a, an electric screwdriver and have work turn out well. I know that by using those power tools in the house, I'm going to be much more likely to do it on the boat. And therefore, our work on the boat will go just that much faster. So there you go. How do you gain do-it-yourself schools skills? And actually, more importantly, what's your next skill that you want to learn? For me, the next time I pick up a jigsaw, I'm working on cutting it just a little bit straighter. Thanks so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. Carolyn and I work pretty hard to answer questions that we hear from our listeners and to share bits and pieces and snippets about the cruising life. And also as we are getting ready to go on our next cruises ourselves, I'm getting ready with my husband to go take off and go for a while. Carolyn is in the process of getting ready to go to the Bahamas for a few months. We know what it's like to get ready to go cruising. We also know what it's like to be out there. If you have questions that hits on any of those things, we would love to answer them. So please drop us a line, drop us a review, let us know how we're doing. And if we're helping, definitely, we'd love to know about it. Thanks again for listening. We're looking forward to sharing an anchorage with you, raising a sundowner. And in the meantime, we'll see you next time.